Hey guys, welcome back to Angel Angela. And on this topic, I wanted to talk to you guys about how the narcissist is extremely delusional. The narcissist is extremely delusional. See, when you're being gaslit and the narcissist starts to attack you, they almost start to view you as someone that you're not. They're trying to tell you who you are. They're trying to tell you how you feel. They've observed you. So based on their observation, they'll categorize you and put you in a group, in a box of what they feel your reality is like compared to the people they've been in in the past. Um, a lot of times they can only perceive you, you know, with the knowledge that they have, meaning that, you know, it's almost like a child, like being a child and you might think you know everything and you're trying to explain to this child you know, that's not how things go. That's not the reality of things. And this child can only see, you know, they can only view the world from what they've seen, from the perimeter around of what they've seen, what's around them. And you're trying to tell this 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 child, hey, there's more than that out, out here. There's more outside of that little box. This is why a lot of times you can agree with the narcissist when it comes to a lot of things, but then there's always this disconnect because you're playing from a part of pain. You're playing from a part of being played, right? And you can see their side. Eventually, you start to see that they're not yearning for you it wasn't you that they were chasing it was those flowers that money those dates everything was in vain there was something behind that the whole time they're so delusional they keep telling you everybody wants them you know um because someone has them on a string and they're trying to throw you off. They're trying to tell you that no one gets this type of treatment, that everything that they do for you, it's, you know, they, they want you to appreciate it because they're like, no one else gets this type of treatment. A lot of times, you know, they're doing stuff because in their mind, they're doing you a favor. They feel like, someone put me through this so they're putting you through it um they'll be so far in their delusion with this person that they feel like hey you know relationships don't work out work out you move on and that's just that yeah people get played things like that until it starts happening to them and now they're pulling you back into this world full of delusions and as soon as they have you they're back to telling you how everyone wants them and they you should be happy they're back right they're trying to bring you into their delusion and then they try to project who they are onto you they all that shame you feel that's what they feel so it's almost giving them a satisfaction when they're seeing you go through it. Now, a lot of times the empath isn't so dumb. A lot of times the empath finally realizes what's going Just on. Like a lot of times the narcissist knows that they're dealing with the Jezebel spirit, but they feel like they're an empath because they feel like they don't want to cause her, you know, evil to people, but they feel like their needs aren't being met. So why not? You know, so... This is why the narcissist is able to keep tabs on where you're at in your healing, in your understanding. That's what makes it so sick. They know they're pulling you into that delusional world and then they're throwing it at you that you're delusional, you know, and then they're they're um, becoming delusional, delusional themselves because anytime there's a disconnection with that Jezebel spirit. The narcissist is basically lying to themselves as well, telling themselves that that person also loves them. They're so delusional. They're like, that person loves me. They just want me to bow down to them. You know, 
that person hasn't found anyone else. And sometimes they become delusional with you because they'll even fall in love with you, which is the love bomb, and actually believe that they like you until that person comes running back. Sometimes they tell themselves, I'm never taking that person back, and they do. But you almost want to block it out. You want to become almost as delusional as the narcissist because you want to believe, hey, if I, if I just let myself go, if I just let myself love freely, this person would see that this is the, the type of love that they've been chasing, basically. You know, so you'll be that person to them. They know sometimes they'll, they'll tell you another man would really appreciate that. Another woman would have really appreciated that, you know, because they want those things. They just don't want them from you. And they and they won't tell you that. So sometimes you become delusional and you want them to see everything because, you know, the ending, you know, it's going to come to an end. You know, you're going to hurt. You know, you're going to have to heal and you don't want to go through that. So you kind of want to be in that delusional world longer with them because it feels good certain things feel nice certain things you've got accustomed to you like the feeling of being with someone so you'll tell yourself i'm gonna ignore everything else and you know how it's going to go you know that by the time they realize what they've done is going to be too late but the narcissist will tell you no i've done this many times no i'm not no, I'm not. A lot of times they have done this many times. They've used many empaths, but they're chasing after the Jezebel spirit. They're chasing after the narcissist. And then you'll see yourself in them. And that's when the truth will set you free. When you see that there's a reason you connected to this person. That's when you decide to break yourself out of that delusional world. When you know there's, there's nothing you can say to make this person change. Your observation is wrong. Your scientific problem is wrong. You have to do it all over again. You have to start the science experiment all over again. Right? The narcissist is basically trying to force you to believe the answer to something that is not true. They're gaslighting you. You know, um... They're even adding to your own personal journey and your own personal story. They're adding things to who you are. They're adding even events that didn't happen. You know, um, and you're trying to tell this person, this isn't who I am, right? But now they've only accepted these things about you. Because now they feel like they know you completely. Why do they feel like they know you completely? Because they were able to break you to the point where you're trying to defend yourself. They were able to break you to the point where you're trying to prove yourself. You know, um, they have you in their world and they feel like if you're in my world, I must be important enough to you. Or smart enough or powerful enough for you to keep inviting me into your world or keep coming into my world. I must I must be a great person. You say you say that I'm I'm judging you, I'm I'm being unthoughtful, you say all these things about me, that I'm treating you a certain way, but that's not my reality. That's not how I think. You know, um, to them, it's all about getting their needs met, you know. So this is like a child, a child that's telling you, you know, a child that is that is going through puberty. And this child is is, you know, they're not worried about, you know, taking your virginity. They're not worried about, you know, um having kids, having babies, and they're just thinking, I need my needs met. I want to have my first kiss. I want to have my first girlfriend. What can I do to have that? I tried being the nice guy. 
I get friend zoned because of that. I know that the I know that the bad guys get the attention. So maybe I'll be a bad guy. Maybe I'll jump into character and be a bad guy. I've tried to play the nice guy, that didn't work. But the bad guy, that works, that gets attention. That got me my first kiss. That got me that got my needs met. I didn't care about the person. I didn't care if it was special for them. I didn't care if that first kiss for them was special. I don't care if they want to be my girlfriend. I don't even care about if, if they want to be my girlfriend. To me, I just need my needs met. I don't care if I left this person pregnant. I'm too young to have kids, so they're going to have to deal with that on their own. And I'm just going to forget about it like it never even happened. And I'm going to believe my delusion that it never really happened. And I'm just going to forget about it and keep living my life until one day, you know, things start backfiring on me or people start looking at me as if I'm a deadbeat. People start talking down on me. People start asking me questions about this child that I've never seen before. Now I'm getting letters in the mail and I, I've been put on child support. I'm going to be forced out of my delusional world because now I'm being forced into reality because my check just got taken away. Or I have court I have to go to. If not, they're going to put me in jail. So I have to break out of that delusion. This is how the narcissist thinks. They think like a child. They only see things the way they want to see them from their point of view. And because of this, they believe their own lies. You know, they turn into chameleons to get their needs met without thinking of or caring about the results of that other person as long as their basic needs are met. Whatever those basic needs are in their mind. So in order for them to get what they want, they know they're deceiving you. They're no, they know they're lying to you. They know that you're asking or you're expecting certain things. So they'll lie to you. They'll tell you what you want to hear. To get their needs met, even though while you're hearing what they're saying, you're believing it. You're believing the dream that they're selling you. You know, and when you believe the dream that they're selling you. They're not thinking I'm going to hurt you, even if you're shedding tears to them. It's why are you shedding tears? You know. Hey, you know, it's not like you're going to be crying forever. Eventually, you're going to get tired of crying. You know, and then instead of them feeling remorse because you're 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 being gaslit and then you're you're being told that the way you're behaving is is not normal. Now you're crazy to them. You're crazy now because they're deflecting they're deflecting from the things that they've done to you. So now what what they do is now they gossip about you. You know, when they're gossiping to their friends, it's like, I'm the man. I have this person at the palm of my hand. I'm finally in control. I got what I wanted. And it's also, hey... Now that I have this person, I don't really need them because when I'm around them, it, it, it almost seems like I'm attracting more supplies and more people. And because I'm attracting more people, I'm always looking. I'm always searching for something new because this person believed my delusional world when I met them. They believed I was the nice guy. They believed I wanted a relationship, a marriage. They believed that I was really their friend. They believed that I was really, you know, a family to them. They believed all these things. But all I cared about at the moment was my needs being met. I can only think for myself, for, for, for what I want. I get what I want. 
Because when I want what I want and I try to be nice about it or ask for it, it's not given to me. If I say I want an open relationship and things like that and, and, I, and I'm up front with people, it's not as easy to get. It's not as easy to get. So instead, I've learned that I can manipulate people to believe that that's what they want in order for them to give it to me and, and, and so that I can exploit it. And by the, re by the time they realize that that's not the life they want to live and they realize that that's not even who they are and they realize that I've influenced them to believe and, to, and feed into my delusional world because I've made myself look valuable, because I've made myself look desirable, because I'm so delusional that I think everybody wants me, even, even the same sex. I think everyone wants me because you believe my delusional world and you believe my delusional world to the point where I even believed it. I mean, I knew I was lying and I knew that's what I felt like I was because I jumped into character. And when I jump into character, I really believe I'm that character. But you fed into that that character and now you have to play the script with me. Now I'm using you. I'm using you to keep writing my script. So what they do is now they're trying to bring new characters into the script. Hey, I have this character over here. You know, they're crazy. They think I really like them. They think I really love them. They're delusional. Meanwhile, you know, they'll even tell you to your face. They'll even, you know, disrespect disrespect you and they'll tell you, you know, you weren't ne me you weren't ever together. Or you're not even my type or, you know, I moved on already. You should move on too. Or no one's thinking about you, you know, or I don't, I don't care about your feelings. I'm not going to give you closure. They already know what you're looking and what you're seeking for because their whole thing was a con. Their whole game plan was for you to believe their delusional world. It, to the point where they gaslight you so much that now they tell you that you're the delusional one. Now they're projecting their delusions on you. You're trying to tell them. You're trying to bring them to the light. You're telling them the truth. You're the spirit of truth in this person's life. Now what happens is they, they believe, they, they remember all the truths that, that you gave them. But they won't give you your credit for giving them those truths the way you would give them credit for making you a better person, even though it took you to go through abuse to become that better person. So it's 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 not that you thank them, but you know that if you wouldn't have went through certain sick, twisted, delusional situations you wouldn't know what it feels like to actually go into someone's world that's super delusional and you and you would know and and now you know not to feed into their delusional world you can't feed into a crazy person's world you know and you can see through that you can spot it to the point where when you see someone doing that to you, you, you stand on your own because you're not a follower. So you realize you were following the narcissist. That's all they were looking for, for a follower. They were looking for a servant. You know, when you thought it was something else. And now they're telling you you're delusional because they've lied to you and they've kept you in that delusion. Because anytime you told yourself, hey, if I'm delusional, if this isn't what I think it is, then I'm out of here, that I'm done. But they wouldn't leave you alone. They'd come back. They would de deceive you. Made you believe that it's going to be different. And then they boom, they tell you, hey, you're delusional. Why should I change? You should have never took me back then. Then leave then. 
then 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 I won't I won't bother you anymore. So they took all that time to make you look crazy, to gaslight you, to call you delusional, just to come back, make it seem like that was just an argument. Make it seem like, hey, we say things and we move past them. But now you've accepted this person back in your life. And instead of them leaving you alone, giving you peace of mind to leave you alone because you feel like, hey, if, if, these are, if this is how you really feel about me, then just leave me alone, right? But they'll tell you that's not how they feel about you. They'll sell you more dreams. They'll act even more delusional. They've just came back from being dumped by a new supply or things didn't work out or this person is just not in the position to be grade A supply. And now, you know, there you can have proof. You can have this is what makes the narcissist so delusional. You can even have proof sometimes that they've done stuff to you. You know, and they'll tell you it didn't happen even with the proof. That's what makes them so delusional because one thing I've learned about narcissistic people is that when they get into character, they get into character and it's very believable, especially to someone who hasn't experienced the 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 type of hell that comes from a narcissist because me personally I've seen it all I've seen this person begging I've seen this person coming to my job looking for me asking for me contacting friends family about me coming up to my my doorsteps coming up to my window sending me flowers crying crying shedding tears until finally I woke up and I realized that they were shedding tears not for me, but for someone else. They try to make it seem like you're delusional because they're stuck living in, de in a delusional world. Sometimes they're crying over someone else that doesn't even want them. But in their mind, they really believe that person wants them and they feel like that person has more to offer you offer them than you and you might be thinking this person's delusional this is as good as it's going to get for them the narcissist will become delusional that they will steal your life they will steal who you are as a person if you bring them up from the hell that they're living in you know and you bring them up to a better situation this person is going to believe that everything that's yours, your lifestyle, is their lifestyle. They'll get around certain people. They'll go to certain neighborhoods. And now they just, you know, they migrate into that, into that community like roaches. The narcissist is a very delusional, sick, twisted horrible type of person sometimes you kind of even feel sorry for them because it's almost like trying to teach a little kid common sense and that little kid is like I understand you but I can't stop having con I, I can't stop just not having common sense I can't stop my behavior and you almost have to keep talking to this child over and over again. Sometimes that child has to learn certain lessons the hard way. And then by the time they learn the lesson and you tell them, hey, I told you so. No, you didn't. I already knew that. You're dealing with someone that's so delusional that they're, they'll never give you credit. They'll never give you the respect. They'll never, they'll never appreciate. They might say they do, but they really don't. Because in the back of their mind, they're giving your name. They're, they're, they're spreading rumors. They're, they're dragging your name through the mud. You know, they're making it seem as if 
you're desperate for them and you don't want to leave them and you're delusional and you're crazy and you have anger problems and you're a negative person. But that wasn't who you were until you got with that person because that's who they are. They brought that out of you because that's how they were feeling inside. And once they were able to project that onto you, they studied your behavior and they saw part of themselves in you. And when they saw that you were more tortured because you weren't understanding where this behavior was coming from, why you even when, when you don't even understand your own emotions and feelings and why you feel the way you feel and you're filled with confusion. A lot of times the narcissist will have you so messed up that they'll have you so far deep in that delusion, forgiving them, forgiving them and preaching forgiveness and forgiving and forgiving and certain people that cross you in certain ways you won't be able to forgive because you feel like they crossed the line. And now the narcissist will tell you, they will come around you and they'll tell you, you still haven't forgave that person because they're wondering why would you forgive them when they feel in their eyes that they've done worse to you. So sometimes you're caught in that delusion, forgiving that person, forgiving the narcissist because you, you want to be a forgiving person, but you also know that in life, certain people can't cross certain boundaries. But you'll, you, you've been in that delusion so long that you don't even realize the dangers of it. This is why a lot of times you'll think to yourself, I thought they didn't get along with this person, but they, you know, you'll end up with no one because they're projecting all that onto you. But then you'll see that they're learning from you and don't want to give you your credit and then they forgive people and then you're thinking, I thought they didn't like them and the narcissist is like, yeah, I don't like them, but I'm still talking to them, you know? I'm trying to keep the peace. So what the narcissist will do is that they'll learn these things from you because they've brought these things out of you. They've brought the way that they've been living out of you. And now they're trying to go and behave the way they were the way you you were presenting yourself to them and now you've became a negative person because they can't see that person you showed them you know um the person that you've always been so they'll start playing that role become like you dump their negative energy on you and anytime you try to get your energy back they say it doesn't belong to you you know, so they put you in that delusion that you aren't who you say you are. So the narcissist will become so delusional and believe that maybe even you're the narcissist and they're the empath. And what they will do is that now they're forgiving people. Now they're the forgiving ones and they're looking down on you. They're looking at you like, dang. That's how I would be feeling right now. But instead, I have you to dump this energy on. And this is why you'll see that when you're down, they're picking themselves up and they're falling back into that delusion again. And now, you know, they 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 work harder. Now they're getting more opportunities. Good things are happening to them. And it's like um, they feel like hey look new person i good things are happening for me i have money i have all these things you know and just like the narcissist when you're doing good they want to come back that person's like oh the narcissist is doing good okay they're they're buying me things they're they're proving to me with their actions you know and then once the narcissist gets com comfortable they start bragging you know um Sometimes they'll come back around and if they feel like you've moved on, they'll look at you and almost project like you're the Jezebel spirit too. And you're, you're no different from the person that they're with. So they're better off over there, you know, um, until they start going through the same things or their needs aren't being met. And it gets to the point where the relationship 
pulls away more and more until it almost feels like you're not together. Um, Technically, you're not, right? Because then if you tell yourself that you are, um, you're kind of falling into that delusion because now you're waiting on them. You're like, I'm waiting on this person. So the narcissist understands that they've been there and that's why they don't want to be there. They want to be able to use you to get stronger. You know, they want to use people so that they know if they keep chasing after certain people that don't want them, they're just that person's going to pull away. That's what the narcissist has learned throughout their life. So you're you're you understand that and you even try to tell them what you're seeing and you're telling them that they're not appreciating you as a person, but they can't see that they're too trapped into their delusion to the point where they feel like they can always come back. They're looking at you and they see a part of themselves and they feel as if they're more powerful and they're dominating over you because they know something you don't know. They know that you're falling for their delusions. They know that you're falling for their lies. They know that there are things that you don't know about life or certain circumstances and they're taking advantage of that. And it's until you finally have an awakening and everything starts to click and make sense. It's until you start to leave the narcissist or or have time to yourself and to get to know yourself, to study people, to study children, to study, you know, human beings that you start to see that you were dealing with someone that is mentally ill, that is very delusional. You can't tell this person. This person feels like they know everything. This person feels like you can't figure me out. You can't figure me out. I'm cut from a different cloth. But somehow we all have the same story. You have to really think about this. A lot of people can agree with a lot of the things I say because they've experienced that with these type of people. So if they're cut from a different cloth and they're so special, why is it that we can all agree that they're very delusional people? And to them, it's like, oh, no, I'm just confident. It's a lot of people that are confident like me. It, it's, it has nothing to do with confidence. The narcissist is the type of person that will step into a room and, and, and you'll sit here and you don't have to do anything. You brighten up the room because people feel your energy. When you talk to people, people feel your energy. But when the narcissist comes into the room, they believe that they're brightening up the room. They actually believe it. They feel like I'm brightening the room up. I'm brightening the room up and no one is even paying attention to them. You know, they start hanging out with someone. All of a sudden, they believe that whatever, however that person is living, that's how they're living. This is how a lot of them get and get so delusional that they get wrapped up into other flying monkeys business. And then they start acting like it's their business because they're a reflection of their friends and the people that they're around. So they might not know the whole truth. They might not know the whole story, but they will get in the middle of it and be almost a projection of that person. That's why they'll get together in a group and families have family meetings. And then they're all jumping on you at the same time off that same energy. The narcissist has to be around people so that they can feel like they have an identity. So they'll identify with their friends, with how they're living, with their relationships. That's what brings them into their delusional world. And then they start believing they are someone that they're not. Sometimes in order to escape reality, most people fall into delusion, you know, and they don't even have to be narcissists, but what makes the narcissist so diabolical is the way they manipulate and lie and um, their lack of accountability. That's what makes them different in their delusion. The narcissist will go to another supply. They'll come back around you and act like you didn't pick them up from from 
and, and help them up from the ground up and they'll come back around you acting extremely bougie and extremely, you know, e delusional. And, you know, it's not that you don't believe that people can change and people can have self-respect boundaries or people can level up. It's not that you can't believe that. But it's the fact that the narcissist will become so delusional because they've been around so, a new supply, a new source, that they'll treat you as if they'll belittle you. It's like someone winning lot the lottery, and now they're just belittling people because they feel like they won the lottery with this new supply. Meanwhile, you're happy for them because you feel like, you know, they should be happy for you that you've grown up, that you, you've, you've, came to a state of mind where you're at peace um, and you accept things, but they will come around you like, like they forgot where they came from, like they forgot the struggle, like they forgot the times where you were hungry, the times that, you know, you were sleeping together in a car, the times where you were finally in a, in a warm bed, the times where we worked our way up. And you're thinking that when you work your way up and you get to the top, you're thinking the narcissist you know, um, will love you because of the journey you, you two kind of had together. And a part of you is grateful because it, it's made you a stronger person where you can chase after, you know, the opportunities that you want without letting people's energies get to you. But they're looking down on you like if you're delusional, like you almost like they never experienced those things with you. Like you didn't wipe their tears when they were at their lowest. Um, they'll act like it never even happened. They'll act like this new version of them, this version that won the lottery, um, you know, never trusted you, never loved you, never cared. Um, and if anything, they think you want something from them. They're delusional. They just start making things up. And now you're thinking you're back with this person and this person's t telling other people, this person's not doing well. This person still is stuck in the past. You know, um, this person, um, they're delusional, you know, um, and I'm trying to help them out. They'll lie to people, you know, um, and even when you do move on, they still won't believe it because they feel like they were able to control you. And because of that, they feel like, hey, if you like me, you'll always like me. Everyone that, that likes me will always like me. They just don't like it that I'm mean, you know. And then they're sitting here talking down on you, right? But you know that when you, you, when you met them and you went to their house, they had holes on the floors that that you can see you can see the plumbing you know it seemed like the it, it seemed like the whole house was going to fall apart you know whole bed caught bed bugs you know to the point where sometimes the narcissist didn't even want to sleep in their own home because they were uncomfortable in their own home and now they're talking down on you because they won, they they won they won the lottery, right? So now they're talking down on you, and and you're thinking to yourself like, "Hey, I'm I, I might not be a millionaire, but uh, you know, I, I I might be you know from a middle class home. How dare you talk to me like that? When when I met you, you were living in a house that was falling apart and breaking down. How dare you talk to me like that?" They'll talk to you as if they were raised like you or they had the opportunities that you had. They'll talk to you as if your life, your lifestyle is a facade. It's not real. It was never real. The narcissist will play this role of delusion They'll bring you down to the bottom where they were at. And while you're sitting here trying to climb out, 
they're they're sitting here now talking down on you because somehow they were able to bring you down because they brought you down with their delusional thinking and their gaslighting. So they brought you down to the pits of hell. And now when you're climbing your way out and you're telling them, I miss the old days. I miss when I was with my family. I miss when things were different. I miss when I had everything. I had everything at the palms of my hands. Now the narcissist is telling you, you're delusional. That never happened. You never had a loving family. You never had a nice house. You never had a nice car. You never had a good job. You never had this. You never had real friends. You never had a, a, a man or a woman that loved you. You never this. You never that. They're literally telling you that your whole existence is fake. And basically it's like, why are you here? Die. You're delusional. They'll even fight you like you're one of the boys. Right. That's how they're looking at you. That's I'm just saying the narcissist is so delusional. And you, if you believe the lies that they're telling you, or if you allow what they've done to you to tear you up, See, one thing about the narcissist is, yeah, they can bring you down to their level. But guess what? It's still not my level. This is your level. So what will happen is that, yes, the narcissist will get blessed because of their delusional thinking. They can sell someone like a salesman. You know, yeah, not everyone is a dummy, but they're going to talk to at least 100 people as a salesman and they feel like at least one person's going to fall for it at least one person's going to fall for it and you'll think that they're getting blessed but they're really getting blessed temporarily because God is trying to push you away and God wants you to wake the hell up God wants you to open up your eyes, open up your mind. God wants you to connect the dots, to put the pieces to the puzzle together. All those times of discards when the narcissist leaves for, for moments at a time and you, and you feel like crap because you know they're playing you. And you, you know you don't have any proof because when they come back, they try to bring you back into La La Land and they believe their own lies. They're sitting here looking at you like, I did want to marry you that day, but today I don't want to marry you. Today I feel different. Because when the narcissist thinks something, they act on it without thinking things through sometimes. And it backfires on them. So all those times that they left you. God was trying to wake you up, even if even if it was a week, a week went by, two weeks went by, a month went by. You didn't speak to this person because they discarded you or you were forced to discard them. God knew that you weren't going to fully wake up because, see, when the narcissist gets you into their delusion. When this person is speaking to you. It's almost like they're singing a song and pulling you in and pulling you back into that spell, back into their delusional world because they're casting spells with their words. They're literally casting spells with their words. And when their spells work because they kept repeating the same lie, they're able to pull you away until that spell isn't as powerful anymore. So anytime the narcissist gets blessed, it's really a blessing for you because God is trying to wake you up. Because God knows that trying to get out of the narcissist delusional world is very difficult. So when you do get to the final discard, when you don't look at these people the way you used to see them, when you see through the lies and you you don't even you can't you don't even feel like they're the same person anymore you feel like that person you knew
has faded away into another person. And even that other person they faded into, that person isn't even that person. It's like you're dealing with a whole nother entity. And you 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 can feel that that person you knew is dead and you and once they're dead and a part of you is dead, that connection, that soul tie is gone. No matter how much you try to to um, relive or re spark certain feelings inside of you, you won't feel them anymore. The narcissist curse is that they can't they can't connect to you either. They'll want to use you, but they won't be able to because you'll be off limits because God is protecting you and God is blessing the narcissist even. God is blessing them to the point where they're showing you, hey, I won the lottery and I'm not taking you with me. Hey, I won the lottery and I'm being secretive. Hey, I won the lottery and I've moved on and have a secret life. And now I have all these things and everything's looking up for me. And you, I'm not going to let you in. I'm going to keep playing like I'm still living in that house with the holes on the floors. As a matter of fact, I don't even live there. I'm homeless now. They're trying to make a joke out of you. They're trying to make a joke out of you. Now, all of a sudden, they're secretive, right? You know something's going on. You might even, to some supplies, you might even start stalking them, trying to see what's going on in their life because it seems like they're happy. It seems like they're blessed. They don't want nothing to do with you because they're, they're being blessed right now. And the narcissist is laughing at you. You're miserable. I'm blessed. If I was such a bad person, why am I being blessed? How come you're not being blessed? Because God wants you to sit down and reevaluate everything. God wants you to take time to get out of the delusion. Meaning that you have to be alone to get yourself out of the delusion. You have to be alone in your own thoughts. You have to be in, alone in your own thoughts and observe the world around you. You know, and you'll see when the tie has been broken and you are no longer delusional anymore. The narcissist can't even get back into your life with the best love bombing that they they try to, you know, relive. They try to relive that love bomb. And now that love bomb does not impress you anymore. And you're wondering why were you even impressed by it in the first place? And that's because you were also delusional when it came to relationships. And that's okay. And that's okay. But the best part about it is that once you get out of the delusion and you tell yourself and you see it with your own eyes, when you when you get out of the delusion, right, you might have been chasing after your parent. You might have been chasing after after the person that raised you and you wonder why they always seem to reject you. You feel like you always have a bad ending or you have bad stories that you remember and you finally came to accept. Hey, I know that person keeps saying they're they're my parent or they're my mother or they raised me and they love me. But now that I'm seeing all the actions that's been happening throughout the years, I'm no longer delusional anymore. I'm no longer chasing them anymore. My fault. My faults were that I was delusional and I was chasing them because their words weren't matching their actions. And I was believing their words more than I was believing their actions. Now I believe I believe them. And now I'm no longer delusional. I might feel a little silly that I I loved you, but. To me, that was the natural thing to do. It, it, It made sense at that time. It made sense that I thought that you cared too the same way. And, you know, once you get out of that delusion, you also realize that you can't go back. You can't go back because you don't want to be the old you either. 
So you have to make a choice between being this new version of yourself or being the old you. And, and really, you know you don't want to be the old you. You don't even like the old you. You know? You like the new evolved you. And the moment you stop searching for these people, it's almost like they're forced they're forced to get out of that delusional world that they've been in. It's like you've 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 literally closed that chapter and now a new chapter starts for them. And now they have to work they have to open up their eyes to the reality of their choice of the choices that they made. It's almost like they're forced not to be delusional, but then they still want to be delusional. So while they're trying to keep playing that role because they feel like, hey, you think it's a role, but this is who I really am. OK, narcissist, we know that's who you really are, but you don't even know what you have coming for you because everything is happening to them. Everything that they did out of their delusion out of their delusions, it's backfiring on them. Certain people start waking up. You know, certain people start calling them out. Certain people start to see that they're treating certain people bad. You know, you have that one auntie that she never, she ne- she doesn't have a college degree. She didn't do anything with her life. Yeah, she has a nice house. She worked hard for it. I respect that. I respect her. But every time people come to my aunt's house at a gathering, she has a really nasty attitude. She doesn't talk to everyone. She doesn't greet everyone that comes into her home. She'll only greet the people that she knows are successful people. People who who are more successful than her. She respects those people, even though she doesn't have any of those qualities about herself. You know, so people that they look up to. will start to see that they'll see, oh, I know that person is they're on me tough. That person wants to be my friend so bad that person wants to keep up with me so bad and they're expecting certain things about that person's behaviors they're expecting that person to be wicked like them and it doesn't always end up that way because that person sees through the narcissist delusions so you know When it comes to the narcissist delusions, they will get blessed, but it's only because God wants you to get out of that delusion that you're in. And once you accept it, you'll see. Once you accept it and you let your actions prove that you understand that lesson, you'll see that everything they were blessed with will disappear. And now they have to learn another lesson that they obviously aren't going to care about. They're not going to care because they're so far in their delusion that when things end and backfire for them, they know with every supply, they know with every job, they know with every situation that they come across, they know eventually people are not going to like them. They're just buying time. So the narcissist knows that they are going to do the wrong thing. They know that emotionally they can't connect to people and that they're going to do something. They're going to say something out of character. They're going to do something out of character. And they know they're buying time, but at the same time, their delusion starts to set in when they have an empath or they have an enabler that is encouraging them because they're they're faking stories to these people. They're not telling full full stories. They're leaving a lot of parts out. So part of their delusion is that they lie to the flying monkeys. They only tell half stories. They, the, the flying monkeys turn on you trying to defend them. And then it brings them back to their delusion. And now their delusion is telling them that they can have you 
the Jezebel, the ex. They can have anyone they want. So um, I hope that this message, you guys, was helpful for your healing. I'm sending you guys lots of love, light, peace. If you guys want to book a session with me, my booking information will be on the description. And if you guys are new to my podcast, don't forget to subscribe. And I will talk to you guys on the next one. Love you guys. Bye.